Hello again, everybody. This is Mr. Everything, and I'm coming back at you with another Wargaming and Miniature video. In this video, we're going to continue on with our black powder tutorials. And in this one, we are going to be talking about brake tests and shaken units. How, what causes you to be shaken, what causes you to break, and how that affects your unit's performance. Okay, now in the previous videos, in the shooting videos and in the hand-to-hand -hand videos, uh, even in the order videos, we talked about uh, units that were disordered or shaken uh, and how that affected their either their command or their shooting or their melee, but we really never talked about how you got there. Okay, there are certain situations that require a brake test. One of them is units suffer excessive casualties from shooting. Okay, so if you have exceeded your stamina, like if this unit has a three stamina, it's already taken three hits, then that represents that it's at maximum stamina, which effectively means this unit is shaken. But if it takes additional casualties from shooting, bang, bang, takes additional casualties, this unit will have to make a break test. So if it takes ex excess casualties, if it takes four casualties in one shot, that is still over its stamina, so it will have to roll. During closing fire, when a unit is moving in to hand-to-hand -to -hand combat, right, they come in, and then this unit does closing fire. This is a Dutch-Belgian unit. Closing fire on these French units. If they get any, uh, if they get enough hits to cause them to be shaken, which is three hits on that unit, if it takes three hits from, or a total of three, if this unit takes enough casualties from closing fire to equal its stamina, then to cause it to become shaken, it must also make a break test. If a unit is shaken, which is three casualties, from artillery fire, they have to make a break test. Are you seeing a theme here? Excessive casualties from shaken, shaken from closing, or shaken from artillery, you have to make. If you're defeated, in hand-to-hand, -hand, you have to make it break test. And the way they represent that is if this unit in hand-to-hand -hand with this unit does two casualties, and this unit and against this unit does one casualty in hand-to-hand, -hand, this unit has one because it has done more casualties. So this unit will have to make a break test. Notice it's not shaken. That's okay. It still has to make it in close combat if you're losing. If two units are engaged in hand-to-hand, -hand, right, they're engaged in hand-to-hand, -hand, but they're, uh, is, if there's a draw, then the units in shaken have to make a break test. So shaken has really a big impact on whether or not you have to make a break test, as well as if you lose hand-to-hand -hand combat. Okay, let's say this unit is being supported by this unit. This unit closes in, goes into hand-to-hand. -hand. Maybe this unit caused a casualty in closing fire. They don't have to make a roll because they're not shaken. They go into close combat. Maybe this unit does two casualties to them, and then they do one casualty back at them, they're losing combat, because that, that shot from closing fire doesn't count towards melee. And so now they're winning by one, so they have to make a break test. If they fail their break test and become, if they break, not, not fall back, that's, that's fine, but if they break, as in they're destroyed, in that case, supporting units would have to make a break test. If they are not broken, they just fall back or hold their ground or something like that, they do not have to make a break test. So supporting units 
that are supporting a unit that breaks also must make a brake test. Okay, and that's pretty much the only times you will ever have to make a brake test. Okay, so let's talk about let's talk about each of those brake tests, and hopefully I can clarify some of these. Tests from shooting. A unit shaken once it has suffered casualties equal to its stamina value. When it's, once a unit has suffered sufficient casualties, usually three, it becomes shaken. After each turn's shooting is complete, units must make a brake test if their total number of casualties is higher than their stamina value. Any casualty markers scored in excessive stamina are then afterwards discarded. Test from closing fire. Chargers must make a brake test if their total number of casualties equals or is higher than their stamina value once closing fire is completed. That's equal to or higher. Regular shooting, it has to be more than higher. Brake test from closing fire refers to the results table as if the chargers were engaged in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Note that this is different to and more dangerous than brake tests from other shooting, which are worked out on the shooting table. Because brake tests have two sides. They get a hand-to-hand -hand side and a shooting side. And tests from closing fire is actually conducted after the unit has made contact. So like this unit would make a charge move, then this unit would decide, I'm going to do closing fire, it would shoot, the test that it has to make is based on the fact that it is actually in close combat. Okay, tests by units defeated in combat. Once the engagement has been fought and the results calculated, each unit engaged on the losing side must make a break test. In most cases, there will be a single unit, but it is possible for two or more units to be engaged. Units that lose combat must take a break test regardless of whether they are shaken or not. You'll get a minus if you take casualties in excess of your stamina, same way as shooting, and they're removed once the brake test is completed. Okay, test from units in drawn combat. Drawn is when it's a tie. If the combat engagement results in a draw, all units that are shaken must make a brake test. Units on both sides have to test if both sides are shaken. And it doesn't matter which side tests first because they both have to test. Test for supporting units. Remember this Brunswicker over here that was supporting our Dutch Belgians? Or actually, they're our Belgian line. Supporting units are not required to test because just because they're on that side. However, supporting units do have to test if friends they are supporting break as a result of a break test. Supporting infantry and cavalry ignore engaged artillery units or tiny units that break unless the supporting unit is tiny itself because the loss of such a unit doesn't impact their willingness to to fight on. Supporting units, even though they're not in base to base, still read off of the hand to hand base because it's assumed that they're supporting by actually fighting. So they're, they run off the hand to hand line. Okay, supporting units will test whether they support or not. So for purposes of this test, supporting units are considered to be such as if they are theoretically able to support regardless of whether they actually contribute a support bonus or not. For example, a unit positioned as if it would support two different friends from the rear, then it must test if either breaks, regardless of the fact that it can only support one of them. So let's say this unit was actually supporting this British unit that's off the screen that you can't see. Even if they break, they are in a support position, so then they would have to make a support. So that basically means they... Even though they're not supporting them, they glanced over there, they saw that unit is running and scattering for the hills, so they have to make that test as well. Okay, note that the break rule, like when I say that unit gets destroyed, doesn't necessarily have to be based on the die roll. It could be as a result of, let's say, it's being charged on all four sides, and then this unit has to retire one move, but it can't because there's nowhere to back up and they get eliminated, then any supporting units that might have been supporting them are also eliminated. Or not eliminated, but they have to make a break test. Okay, so how do you make a break test? Well, you roll two dice, right? Okay, you roll the two dice and you apply these modifiers. You get a minus one for each casualty, for each excess casualty suffered by a unit, either by shooting or hand-to-hand -hand combat. Okay, so when I say excess, that's, you, that's damage over their stamina. So if they have taken five hits by the French, let's say, then 
they only they get a minus two because that's their stamina. They get a minus two on their break test die roll. Disordered. If the unit becomes disordered and it, uh, you know, they're wavering, they've got some gaps in their lines, they get a minus one to that die roll. And you get a minus one if at least one of these casualties was caused by artillery. And that's it. Basically, you just make a test in excess of your stamina. Once you're done, you pull the stamina marker off. Okay, so now when you roll, you want to roll high, not low. So you want to roll boxcars, actually, because remember, those are minuses. And then you consult this chart here, the break test results table. Okay, so let's just take a glance at this results table. Okay, this chart is fairly simple. Uh, you have a four or less. And a four or less is always shooting and hand-to-hand. -hand. The unit breaks. Just destroy the unit. A five uh, is also shooting and hand-to-hand. -hand. And it will determine if it... You have to look to see if it's an infantry or cavalry unit that's testing or an artillery unit. If it's an artillery unit, they break. If it's infantry or cavalry they retire one full move to the rear without changing formation. Once they've moved, they become disordered, if it's not already. If the unit is unable to comply, it will make two moves to the rear, if this enables them to reach a tenable position. Okay, what that basically is saying is, let's say this guy is sitting right at 12 inches behind this guy, and this guy has to make a withdrawal he could shift to the left or the right. That's not a problem. But let's say for some reason there's a river or a road or something, or you know, like a, a high wall or a city or, or other enemy units preventing him from going this way. So he retires 12 inches. If that 12 inches puts him inside this unit for some reason, then you don't just stop there. You continue on another 12 inches back. You do two moves. And if you're unable to comply with, with the further requirement, then the unit breaks and is destroyed. That's infantry and cavalry on a five. Now, if you roll a six, a modified six, it will matter whether or not it's shooting or hand-to-hand, -hand, and it will matter if it's infantry and cavalry or artillery. If it's shooting, they just hold their ground. Or the artillery breaks. You notice how artillery likes to break. If it's hand-to-hand, -hand, artillery breaks. <laughs> so it's easy to destroy artillery, right? Their break tests suck. Infantry and cavalry, they'll retire one full move if it's hand-to-hand -hand without changing formation. Becomes disordered, just like five above. And then if they roll a seven or more, which is a good roll, if it's from shooting, infantry, cavalry, artillery all hold their ground. If it's hand-to-hand, -hand, it's a little bit different because it's a little bit more scary. So infantry hold their ground. Cavalry retires one full move to the rear without changing formation. If unable to comply, the unit becomes disordered and may make two moves to the rear. And if it's unable to comply with that, it breaks. Artillery breaks. So even if artillery, the only time artillery won't break and run is if it's seven or more from shooting. That's it. <laughs> All right, let's talk about retiring units because that's kind of important. Retiring is, remember, that full move to the rear. A retiring unit must move full, or in the, some cases, two full moves. Units normally retire to the rear, except the units fighting to their flank or to their rear. Basically, you just uh, retire in the opposite direction. And a retire move is a normal move in every respect and must be made entirely within the confines of the unit's rear or opposing quarter. And you don't have to turn around. So what that's saying is, get these guys off the screen. When this unit retires, you do not have to pick these guys up and turn them around like they're running for the hills. You don't have to say, oh my god, i got to turn these guys around because they're cowards and they're running to the rear. No, you can just back them up. They're backpedaling, right? You actually can keep them facing in the same direction 
as they were when they failed their brake test. It can move through other friends as long as they move all the way through and they don't stop on a, on a friend. Now, it can be done that a friendly unit will block you from retiring and then possibly block you from retiring that second time and causing you to be destroyed, so be conscious of that when you're deploying your units. And if you retire from the table, you're destroyed. So like if you're so close to the edge of the table that when you back up, you back up off the table. Troops in March column who are obliged to retire will automatically form into line where there's sufficient room for them to do so. Irregular or tiny formations will reform into their default formation. As this formation change requires the extra move, they become disordered. Okay, units that hold their ground. I mean, it sounds pretty straightforward. A unit that holds its ground will, generally speaking, stay where it is and continue to fight. There are some situations where a unit that holds its ground must move. This covers troops that are caught in the side or rear, or while marching and allows them to turn and face their enemy for the next round of combat. This means that it, you can hold out for a turn. This means if you can hold out for a turn, will allow you to turn and face your enemy. So like they get struck in the side, uh, they have to make their brake tests and all that stuff, and if they pass, they get to turn on uh, after you make your hold your ground move or roll. Troops in March Column who hold their ground will automatically form into a line facing the enemy. Basically they all do like a left face or a right face. And units that are fighting exclusively to their rear or one flank will automatically form into line facing the enemy if there's sufficient room to do so. Units that are fighting in more than one direction at once, say to their side and rear, are stuck as they are and must do their best in the following round. This may mean that they are unable to bring their full fighting potential to bear. Quite honestly, they are lucky to have survived thus far. Okay, defeated cavalry. As you can readily see from the break test results table, the best result that a defeated cavalry can get is to retire. This is deliberate. This means that cavalry are more brittle than infantry in hand-to-hand. -hand. Cavalry versus cavalry fights do not become bogged down, but are resolved quickly, often leading to one side retiring and the other side making a sweeping advance. We like this. Shaken units. All right, shaken units. Casualties accumulated on a unit represent the results of mounting fatigue, loss of officers and men, expenditure of ammunition, failing morale, and the multitude of other factors that erode a unit's ability to continue in a cohesive fashion. Okay, so what they're basically saying is uh, your casualties that you take represent a whole lot of different things, not just men dying. It could, it could represent you're losing ammunition. It could represent some people are running, some people aren't. You know, it, it's, it's basically just, it's like a morale hit. Let's be clear, casualties suffered in excess of a unit's stamina value are always discarded once the break tests have been taken. A unit that's shaken is indicated by a number of casualty markers equal to its stamina value. Okay, the, the rules that cover shaken units are covered throughout this tutorial and throughout the rules uh, They because they can affect shooting, hand-to-hand, -hand, and we'll summarize those below right here. Shaken units are removed from the battle for good if they leave the table. They don't return. Shaken units suffer a minus one to hit penalty when shooting. Shaken units suffer a minus one to hit penalty in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Shaken units cannot charge or countercharge an enemy unit. Shaken cavalry units that win a round of combat cannot use a sweeping advance. Now, as described in the rally order, it is possible for officers to restore a unit's fighting efficiency by rallying troops that are therefore removing casualty markers. The rule applies to all units that have suffered at least two casualties, including units that are shaken. If a shaken unit is successfully rallied in this way, it loses one casualty marker and is no longer shaken. So if I rally this unit, I'll take one off, they will be non-shaken. If they have only one casualty, 
They cannot be rallied. You can't go less than one. Once you've taken one, you're always going to have one. But if you've got two or more, which is usually three, you can remove one at a time. So that would take two turns to bring them back down to one. Two rally orders. But you might rally one more and then take another hit, you know, or something. It's, it goes back and forth. All right, now that is brake tests. Now I do want, I'm going to close the book, set it off to the side, and I do want to make a, a real quick comment. I've watched a number of videos out there, guys, and uh, some tutorials, and some also some gameplay videos, and uh, this is really what prompted me to make these tutorials is because I've, I watch these other games and I, in my head, I'm pointing out rules to myself that they are doing wrong or they're misinterpreting. And so I'm putting out these tutorials to help alleviate some misconceptions. One of them is a unit doesn't have to make, and when I say a unit, I mean like a whole brigade doesn't make a brake test against your morale value once you need to make a morale value, uh, a, a once you get to a certain number of casualties. So what you do is you calculate your brigade morale to determine if a brigade as a whole has lost its will to fight. And one of those, and, and we'll go over this l later in detail, but I just wanted to touch on this because a lot of people are thinking that brake tests are brigade brake tests or uh, the morale value of a unit is the morale of the unit. And it's not. The morale value is your saving throw versus casualties. If at the start of a turn, half or more of your infantry and cavalry in a brigade are deemed broken, the remaining units of the brigade are immediately broken. Okay, so... Uh, there's no die rolling to save anything, uh, or or there's no um, chance for this not to happen. This is automatic. So at the start of your, let's say this brigade had four infantry units, and now it's down to just two, they're considered broken. Now how do you determine if, if they've lost a unit for calculating broken? Well, if a unit's been removed from the battlefield, either destroyed or left the field, or uh, if they're shaken at the start of the turn. So a unit that is shaken counts against your brigade morale. Usually you can ignore artillery pieces, but in some brigades, like when it's a all artillery brigade or something like that, then of course each of the artillery pieces would count, but normally artillery is an attachment to an infantry or cavalry brigade, and you don't count those. Now imagine it's an odd number, like three infantry, two cavalry, or something like that, and it's got five units. You, you have to exceed half the unit. So the three of them would have to be broken or destroyed, or, sta or shaken or destroyed. Now there's a few rules that brigades have to do uh, when they are broken. Units from broken units cannot return to the table. Disordered units in a broken unit have to remain disordered even if they have a die roll. Some elites have it like a die roll to remove disorder even when they're uh, in close combat or something like that. You still can't do it if the army or if that brigade is broken. Units that are shaken cannot be rallied even if they are allowed to recover by means of some other special rule. Once you're shaken, you're shaken if the brigade is broken. All units are allowed to make a single retire move in the command phase instead of using their initiative or receiving an order. They can do this even if disordered. Technically, it's the only move they can make. Units within 12 inches of the enemy and not already engaged in hand-to-hand -hand combat must retire as described above. And artillery units that choose to retire can expend two moves, one to limber and one to move, assuming they were no normally able to do so. Artillery units that cannot limber also cannot retire. And if they're obliged to do so, they're considered abandoned. Okay, so, so talking about brigade morale. There was, you notice there was no die roll. There was no save. There was no 
let's roll their morale to see if they're broken. No. Once you hit half of your unit or more, you're broken. And you have to abide by the broken rules. Uh, and that's one reason why I'm doing these tutorials, basically just to make sure that everyone understands that uh, there are certain rules. Okay, so in my personal opinion, now this is a personal opinion, and this might or might not be part of the way you want to play this game or not. Once a brigade starts to retire, right, they, 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 they do like the slow roll to the rear, right? They're just gradually backing up. As a player, if you're playing one brigade per player, and that player's troops are getting decimated, we'll call it, and they're slowly having to retire, and some other players on the other side, he can continue to press the advantage, or he could just let that unit sit and rot, because they can't do anything else. So, in my opinion, it's better just to pick the units up after maybe one turn of retiring backwards. Just pick them up and put them away, because they're pretty much out of the game. But in a certain situation, like a spe specifically a defensive situation, you might want to leave them because even though they're retiring, they're still an obstacle for your opponent if he's trying to get up and take an objective. If you are the attacker and you are retiring, you might as well just pick them up. That's just my personal insight on that break rule. Okay, well, we're going to talk about victory and defeat in a later, much later video. This was just about break tests and shaking. All right, I'll catch you next time.